Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, The Growing Developer, and this is yet another new episode of this Flutter tutorials. And yeah, state management this, state management that. Let's just solve this for once and for all, right? Uh, nothing more going here and there. This will be a complete tutorial series for the state management. And let's start with the basics and from the root. So my root uh, tutorial will be of scoped model. Okay. So let's understand what is scoped model and rest everything like provider, MobX or something like Flutter block is all related to this only. This only the inherited widget, which is the root of all the concepts. Okay. So we'll not go down to the inherited widget because all about that inherited widget will be covered in the scoped model as well. So let's start with the scoped model and I'll tell you why we are using scoped model, what it can do in this video. So, so stay till the end because this video will be very important because this is a much needed concept. The growing developer. So let's see what all I have. I have my main.dart file and inside that you can see I have a scaffold and app bar which is just an empty app bar and I have a home page inside this home page. This is nothing just a blank container. Okay, nothing else. So let's understand what is scoped and what is model. Okay, so let's just uh, divide these terms and understand each one by one. So what do you understand by scope? Scope is something like uh, the availability of the object. Okay from how long for how long the same object will be available or in this case a same model will be available to us uh, now let's understand what do we mean by models so models are nothing but just an uh, object of a class basically we'll create a class we'll create its object and based on those objects we will do our own state management and yes, you can see that I'll not be using any stateful widget. I'll just be using stateless widgets and still the UI will update accordingly. So yes, so let's quickly create a model first. Okay, so inside my lab, I'll create a new directory name it as models. And inside that model, I create a new file. I name it as cart. Yes, this is a uh, an example that I've been looking many times when I started Flutter right in the beta phase and I faced many problems and I had to actually go through all the Flutter docs to understand this. So here I'm right uh, right now starting with the cart object. So if you are creating any e-commerce application, go for this approach or if you are already using provided, then that's well and good, right? Okay, so let's start. So what are objects and how to create models actually? So it's just a normal class, that's it. So I'll write, class cart that's it that's your model okay any object that you create in for this class will be your model for you okay next thing is model is like a data representation how you're representing the data how you how you are encapsulating the data okay so inside this I'll create a list and name it as cart items and this will be initially an empty list I'll create a method at to cart and whenever this add to cart method will be called what I'm gonna do I'll just add two here so each time I'll be uh, calling this add to cart method each time two will be added to this cart item so after calling add to cart four times our cart items will look like this so it will be like this two comma two comma two comma two it's four times you will have four elements and uh, with each exactly two okay because we are each time adding two only right so let's understand like uh, how we can use it how, how to create uh, objects of it so it's a basic thing so what we can do is inside my home page, I'll do something like cart, just import it, cart equals to cart. So this creates a new object of cart and what I can do inside this container as a child, I'll write text and inside this, I can use like interpolation, I'll write cart dot cart items dot length. 
So what I'm doing, I'm just printing the cart items length. Let's save this and see what happens. And you can see that zero is being printed here, like displayed here. So let's just increase the size. So yeah, if you can hear some noises that those are my little kittens that my cat just gave birth to. These are four little kittens. These are very cute. I'll just share the photos in my YouTube community soon. Okay. So yes. So let's continue with the coding, right? So 20 and still not visible. So let's do 40. Okay. So now you can see a big fat zero. That's nothing that you want to see actually, right? <laughs> yes. So we are having this cart items dot length and this is the, that's it what we are right now having. So let's just wrap this with a column. Okay, so why I'm wrapping this with column is that I'll create a new flat button and in this on press of this what I'll do I'll call the method add to cart. Okay, so I'll write cart dot add to cart. So remember the more I press this button the more two will be uh, added to the list. Okay, so let's give it a child and a text add to not true to cart and color would be our primary color only that is blue yes like this so add this add to cart button as well and after that just for your reference i'll just print card dot card items okay so what we expect is that whenever this add to cart button is pressed i want the zero to increase as well so if you can see the console here right i hope you can see it now better so let's just add to cart i added to cart you can see that the list is being displayed and printed as two again i'll press it you can see there are two twos being added then again now you can see that the length is three but yet here it is just showing me a zero and one more thing and if i just hot reload it Okay, again it add to card. You can see that it again starts from a new uh, start. Okay, so again my card is a new model of card is being made, and this list is again initialized with an empty list. So that's not what we want actually, right? Uh, the more our UI updates, I don't want everything to reset whenever my UI just updates. Okay, so how to tackle that problem and how to maintain this like uh, each time everywhere we are having only one item or something like that okay so yeah how to do that we'll use the scope model so for that go to a material app and wrap this material app with a scoped model widget scoped model okay this is a scoped model and it is expecting a model with us so what kind of scoped model do you want like what do you want to pass to all of the tree all of the widgets in the tree i want to pass cart so you will use this uh, closing arrows and opening arrows these brackets and uh, you'll write the model that you want so we created a model named as cart let me just import it yes like this so now you can see that uh, we just added some generic types to it that uh, this code model is of type cart now it is giving the error that this card doesn't extend model so while using this code model remember this thing that whenever you are creating a model for your scoped model it has to extend the model class which is given the scope model package now if you go to main.dart you can see that the error is gone and inside this model i'll write cart that's it use opening and closing bracket to create a new object and now you can see that i've created a new object okay and this will be the same object that that will be passed to each of the widgets in the tree right next thing now again okay, this is much bigger let me just zoom out a bit yes so yeah next thing is instead of this instead of this card what i will do i'll just wrap this container or rather this text okay i'll wrap this text or can like yes so I'll wrap this column with a new widget, name it as scoped model descendant. So what is a scoped model descendant? It is like a child to the parent. Scoped model that we just declared here is like a parent that has this card 
and he is ready to distribute the SCART object to each of the descendant or the children, right? So what we'll do, it is expecting a builder, okay? Inside this builder, it takes up the context, underscore the context, and then it takes up the child. So we'll just write child here, and then it returns us the model, okay? And here, we will just return whatever we want. So I'll just copy this column from here, cut it from here and paste it after this, just like that. And we'll remove this child. Yep. So you can see that uh, I have this. Now instead of this card, I can write model, model, and again model. So what is happening here that we have created a scoped model descendant and it is returning us the context, the child. This is right now useless for us. We'll not be using it. And the other thing is the model. So this is the model that is being passed from this uh, scoped model. Okay. So what we we'll see is that whenever this button is pressed, whenever this button is pressed, we can see uh, that the same changes are being reflected. So let's uh, uh, save this, hot reload it and we got some errors. Could not find the correct scoped model. Okay. So why are we getting this error? Because this scoped model descendant cannot determine which scoped model to actually descend in. So here we need to give the types. Let's save this. And the error is gone. Okay. So this is very important. You need to give generic types. It is from these types only that this can determine which model to inherit. Okay. So let's add to cart. Again, two is being printed. Again, two comma two is being printed. Again, it's the same thing. Now, if I save this, let's just save this, try it. Again, the same thing is being happening. Now, what we can do is, after this add to cart, I'll write notify listeners. That is, now I want the complete scoped model descendants to be notified that there is some change. Come on, man, you have to do something. So let's save this. and here they you can see that the changes are being reflected again and again so that's the beauty of it and you can see that now there are five elements and the changes are reflected we have not used any kind of set state we have not used any kind of stateful widgets here what is happening is that this code model descendant is continuously listening to the scope model and when you call this notify listeners method it automatically listen to any changes so when you add this there is a change in cart items so it notifies all the so scored model descendants that yes there is a change in the model so it automatically takes up the change and uh, rebuilds the part okay take it to a next level and see if it works if it change the screen or not okay so what we will do as you can see that i've created a second screen name it as stateless widget it is a stateless widget and it just returns a scaffold with the app bar says second screen and the text is showing that cart is having this much elements okay so we'll go to this and i'll just copy this flat button once again and this time i'll name it as go to screen 2 okay so on press of it what i'll do i'll just navigate to it navigator dot push context and the root would be a new material based route it takes up the builder in the context and it will take us to our second screen right like this so uh, yes save this and you can see that we have one a more button which says go to screen 2 and if I press on it you can see that we have uh, reached a new screen second screen as you can see here let me just add some styling to it i'll just increase the size like right so the size would be again 28 i guess okay so card is having that uh, this much elements and let's see if the changes are reflected here as well or not so i'll wrap up this text with a scoped model descendant it's the same thing okay 
I need to give the generic types. It's just a, a revision for you, right? I'll give it a, a generic type as cart because that's the model that we are descending after this cart. It will expect a builder. So instead of this child, I need the builder. Okay. Now remember this uh, order. First, it is context. We are not at all uh, concerned about the context. So it is whatever. Then we have the child. This child is still not usable for us. We'll not use it much. And then the third thing is the model. Now from this, we will just return the actual child that we want. Okay. So we will return this text, cut it from here, paste it, and that's it. So we are returning it. And yes. So let's save this. So it's the one and the same thing that is it is working perfectly. And here what I'll do after this elements, I'll write use the interpolation. I'll write model dot cart items dot length. Okay, so I'll be displaying the length here. Let's save this and see what is being displayed here. We'll go back. Okay, let's add to the cart. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So you can see that five is being printed here. Now I want to show you something that I'm not at all passing any values from the constructor. Let me just zoom this. So if you have any trust issues like that. <laughs> So this second string is not having any kind of uh, constructor where I'm passing any values. Okay, let's go to screen two. And you can see that only five is being uh, displayed here. So the same changes are being displayed on the other screen as well. Yes, no logic uh, being written here. As you can see in the second screen, I've just used a scope null descendant. It is listening to any effect, any changes that is happening inside this cart and which method is making it possible. It is this notify listeners. If you forget to call this notify listeners, none of your changes will be reflected to the UI. So make sure you are doing that. And once you're using this approach, no need to call set state. Just stay away from that. Okay, good. So yes, so let's see, press it again and go to screen two. Again, it is seven. So the same changes are being reflected to n number of screens wherever you want. Only one thing that you want to remember is that wherever you use the code model, you can use code model only after that widget. That's why I use this code model at the root level, even before the material app. So suppose if you use this code model, uh, maybe inside this home page, Okay, suppose I use this code model inside this home page. So what would have happened is that uh, after this home page, any widget that lies in the tree will be able to access the scope model using the scoped model descendant. So it's always better if you use the scope model at the root level. Probably I'll prefer using that uh, uh, wrap up this body with the scope model. But yes, it's totally your choice. Not uh, why not uh, make it at the root level. Okay. So that's how the scoop model work. Write out, uh, write down in the comments how you feel about it. Okay, if I was able to make you understand about what is scoop model and how do we use it, the next video will be about the provider. So I'll take uh, like two two days, maybe two to three days to, for the provider. But I want you all to write down in the comments what kind of changes you want me to do for the provider. If you want me to go a bit slow with the provider or like the speed is fine you are able to understand this so if you are able to understand the scope model the provider will be very easy for you okay so yeah that's it let's wrap up for this video and yes don't forget to go to the growingdeveloper.org it is the growingdeveloper.org and go through this website and just give your reviews in the comment section i'll be soon adding the uh, state management blog here so yeah go and check out this as well so that's all hope you like this video hope you learned something from this video thank you so much for watching this and all those who are still staying at the end of this video big thanks to you so goodbye have a nice day bye bye